A large fossilized skull was found in northeastern China, preserved almost perfectly for more than 140,000 years. It belonged to a large-brained male in his 50s with deep-set eyes and thick brow ridges, combined with primitive features such as a broad nose and low cheekbones. The skull was discovered in 1933, but only came to the attention of scientists more recently. The man who found it hid the skull at the bottom of a well for safekeeping in the city of Harbin, when part of China was under Japanese occupation. It was later dug up and handed over to paleontologist Professor Ji Qiang at Hebei Jieyao University in 2018. Since then, Professor Ji and his colleagues have been busy researching it, and their analysis of the skull has just been published in the journal The Innovation. Professor Ji says Dragon Man is a closer ancestor of modern man. The findings show Dragon Man is more closely linked to Homo sapiens than Neanderthals are. Which means they shared common ancestor in Asia. In the future, we'll further develop this research to find the common ancestor of Dragon Man and Homo sapiens in China or East Asia. Researchers say the discovery could fundamentally alter our understanding of how human evolved. Not all scientists agree that Dragon Man is a separate species, but they believe this finding is an important piece of evidence for ongoing research on the human family tree. Zhang Dan, CGTN. Thank you so much uh, uh, for having me uh, here.、Uh, this is、uh, absolutely fascinating findings, and actually very surprising. You know, two days ago,、uh, I read the news about the you know、uh, amazing finding fossil finding in Israel, and then yesterday, and then read another one. This is from China, and even more exciting. And、uh, this is a finding may potentially transform the prevailing view of how.、Uh, Our own species emerged and evolved, and although its exact the provenance is difficult to determine, the,、uh, the you know the high being the skull, you know so-called the dragon man fossil is one of the most well preserved skulls dating to this critical period between the hundred thousand and four hundred thousand years ago, and、uh, you know this is a skull is is just beautiful. And it has a unique the combination of the primitive and more the modern features,、uh, with particularly you know with the face more closely resembling the Homo sapiens. And uh, uh, you know I can list you know the, the also I read actually the the articles published in the innovation you know three articles, and they give a long not only just unique the feature. And they are really, are really talking about the combination of the, the various traits and the feature, such as you know the huge brain and massive the brow ridges and、uh, the deep eyed the、uh, the socket, and apparently has、uh, this is a, a bulbous nose.、Uh, this is may represent the pre. This is skull may represent previously a known lineage of the human family, separated from Neanderthal. And separated from Homo sapien, and、uh, and then the 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 researchers, and、uh, also conducted this phylogenetic analysis, and not only just look at the, the you know the、uh, the study the order the measurement the, of the skull, but they'll make in comparison. At least I I believe there was 19 of the skulls, and the heart being the skull, and the hand of all the fathers from China form a new branche. Closer to modern human than Neanderthal, so this is a really, really exciting. And then the Chinese research believe the Harbin skull is distinctive enough to make it to the new species.、Uh, I also notice,、uh, uh, you know, the collaborator, you know, the very famous paleoanthropologist from uh, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the Natural、uh, History Museum in London, you know, Professor、uh, the Chris Stringer. I mean, you know, he's、uh, you know he's wonderful, but then he believe it is similar、uh, to the、uh, uh, you know this Dali skull found in 1978. You know, he more or less had some kind of reservation、uh, to give the new、uh, uh, new name. But then you know, certainly let's say he believe this is uh, uh, wonderful uh, the findings in the past 50 years. Okay, and uh, uh, in short,、uh, this is a finding could potentially change prevailing the view of how. And even the where our the species of Homo sapiens evolved. Yeah.
Well, Professor, I can tell that you are personally quite excited about the latest discovery. So how about some peer review time? And not all scientists agree that the dragon man is a separate species of early human. And that's quite common in academic circles. So um, what do you make of the main argument from um, those questioning voices? Well, th th this is uh, absolutely true in academic field, uh, and this is how the science works. And uh, this is also, you know, particularly true in the, the paleoanthropology. And as you know, we know there are probably uh, many more uh, the, the paleoanthropologists uh, uh, study this human origin than you know the, the actual number of the fossils have been found. So you know, whenever you find the new uh, fossils. And they always, uh, they're, they're, you know, always, let's say, there are a lot of debate. And, uh, uh, you know, some say, well, this is definitely something new. You know, we can, uh, you, know, you know, say this is a new species. It's always controversial to claim a new lineage of the human family uh, because many of the, the skulls defining features may uh, simil uh, simply be the matters for the scale rather than distinct to the trait. Okay, the provenance of the, the uh, the dragon man is still problematic in spite of, the, of the rigorous efforts made by researchers through the use of various geochemic, geochemical uh, techniques. So the proposed grouping and the species designation is stirring the debate among the scientists. I have read the, uh, I mean, you know, basically, you know, since yesterday, I, I believe that more than uh, the maybe 40 or 50, you know, the the. Uh, news media, you know, they talk to the the uh, the, the, uh, the paleoanthropologists, talk about all this debate, and it's it's quite normal, I would say. And uh, but I think one of the, the I I would say the two things. One is this is uh, the dating, and uh, uh, and then also the, the provenance uh, uh, still remain unclear. So this is a wonderful reason. Another one is there's a lack of the genetic study of the, the fossil. So, so far, they're only based, you know, when we talk about a new species, they're only talking about morphology and the size. And there are no, like, uh, no genetic studies. You know, I, uh, I actually, I watched a little bit of the uh, news from China, and uh, they're mentioning that that's something they want to do in the future. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Jing Zhichun in Vancouver.